In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Verther Profile Fountain Pen. I'll go over the specs, I will do a writing sample, and I'll tell you what I like and don't like about this pen coming up. Blake here with Blake's Broadcast. On this channel, I review fountain pens, paper, and ink. And as always, I put links in the show notes in the description below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. All right, let's get on with the review. This is the Werther Profile Fountain Pen. And this is in a category of fountain pens that I would say are pens from manufacturers that I really like, but that make kind of a so-so-ish looking fountain pen. Now, when I say looking, I mean just in terms of the, the specs of the pen. Now, Werther is a German company from Baden-Baden, uh, or Werther is probably more correct pronunciation, and they make a really awesome pencil. Well, they make a, a couple of different pencils, but they make these really nice sketch pencils with a big 5.4 uh, millimeter lead, and they come with things like this stand, which is also a sharpener for that that lead. Really nice clutch pencils, and then they make ballpoints in the sort of similar matching kind of thing. Do sell this compact Verther pencil and sharpener at thepapermind.com and for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. I I really like these and I've used these for a long time. They're really good quality and just it's a well put together package. Now the profile is a little bit less compelling. However, I do think that it looks really nice. So let's walk through the pen. Now the pen is made out of solid aluminum. It comes in three finishes. We have the gray here. There is a natural aluminum, which is like this pencil here. And then there is a black finish as well. And these retail for, I believe, $50. For $50, I think this is actually quite a good looking pen. It has a very minimal kind of utilitarian look to it that I really like. I like this ribbed body that we have here. And the body walking through the pen, it is a straight cylinder. And then the cap again is also straight. We have a plastic finial up on top. I believe it's plastic. Then we have the clip, which has like a very like thin piece of metal, which sort of goes into this plastic sleeve. There's a dimple, an even dimple in the middle. It kind of just sort of carries on this rib look. I think it looks really good actually. And we have a very subtle, elegant Werther Germany logo here. It is a snap cap, and on the bottom here, the, clip, the cap does snap onto the back here. It's a little bit sharp around the edges here. That sort of gives you not a sense that maybe this isn't the highest end pen. I mean, you're not going to cut yourself on this, but it's just a pretty plain kind of finish on there. Now, it's a snap cap. And again, it snaps onto the back there, although that's not making a click for some reason. Well, maybe it doesn't click, but it, it seats onto there uh, very securely. And then we have a ribbed grip section here, which does taper towards the nib. This is a Schmidt nib, and these come in medium and fine. This is one of the, the cheapest kind of nibs, I think, that you can <laughs> get for a fountain pen, which is sort of why I put this in that category of pens from companies that I really like, but don't really love the look of their fountain pen. Um, so that's this. Now, this nib actually writes really, really smooth. Every time I use this pen, I'm really impressed by how smooth it is. Now, I am not saying that if you get one of these that your nib is going to be really smooth. I think there's going to be some variations. I happen to have gotten a really nice writer. Now, one thing I don't love about this is the cap. See when it's kind of off? It's easy to get it kind of off at an angle like this where you see it's not quite in line. When that's the case and I go to kind of close it, there's really no assistance to help guide the pen in and close it. So you just full on stop, you can't close it. So you kind of have to adjust and then it will snap into place. I find this surprisingly annoying. A lot of times, you know, I'm just not thinking about it and I'm trying to close this and I'm like why isn't this closing and then I kind of have to jiggle the cap and it'll seat on there firmly. 
not my favorite part of this pen, probably my least favorite part of this pen actually. I had this pen for probably four months and it actually has been very reliable. I've left it for two weeks without any uh, use, picked it up, it wrote right away. I was really surprised by that. I don't know how well this the cap is going to seal in, in time because it is a snap cap and you know it just doesn't have like the best feeling action but in my tests uh flawless performance in terms of sealing the pen i mean leaving the pen to, <laughs> for that long inked which you should never do uh is uh, pretty impressive that it wrote right away now you will see there is some damage to the finish here i do not know if i did that or if that's how it came to me. I haven't been able to make any other marks like that, so my feeling is that's how it came from the factory, but I don't really know that for sure. Now let's do some measurements. We can do some pen comparisons also, but let's take a look here. So in terms of the length, this is 132 millimeters long. Uncapped, 121 millimeters, and posted this does post nicely. I don't run into that weird cap issue when I'm posting it. Roughly 150, 151 millimeters there. And then for the barrel width, 10.1 millimeters wide. Now in terms of the grip section, I do think this is a, a thinner grip section, but this pen just being made of that aluminum is very lightweight. So 9 point, well, let's see. It's hard to not get it in the ribs here. <laughs> Uh, the ribbed part of the section. So 9.4 at the widest and at the narrowest here, I'll do the, sort of the narrowest rib here, 8.5. So it's a thinner grip section, but this pen, as we'll see here, is pretty light weight. Oops, 20 grams and 11 grams. So especially uncapped, it's very lightweight. I have been using this uh, posted and have had no issues. If you have a smaller hand, not that I have big hands, um, it will probably be a little bit top heavy, but for me, the way that it rests, um, it stays in place pretty nicely. So, like that. <laughs> Capping this pen is so annoying. Okay, um, now let's compare it to some other more common pens. This is a Platinum 3776 in sterling silver. Uh, we can see it's a little bit shorter than that pen. And then here is a Aurora Optima, which is definitely on the shorter side for a pen, but it's a thicker pen. You can see it's definitely shorter than that. And then we also have a Namiki Vanishing Point. So this pen is a thinner pen, full size length, but a bit on the, the thinner scale of things. It's not a crazy thin pen, but it's not a super thick pen either. Okay, let's do the writing sample. Going to be using a Papermind Mitsubishi bank paper notebook. These notebooks are really excellent with fountain pens. And for Blake's broadcast viewers and subscribers, you can get 10% off with code BB10 at checkout. All right, so this is the Warther Profile M, and this is Kawako black. I don't know why I put an extra O there. Fast writing. Yep, no performance issues there. Yeah, I, I really am happy with the way that this nib writes. It's very smooth. Um, in terms of flexibility, basically none. Reverse writing, ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> uh, it's really sharp, it really digs into the paper there, so I would not recommend that. But overall, I've been really impressed with it. Again, I left it for weeks with ink, and it wrote right away. So very impressed with that, even though I hate this cap. <laughs> it seems to seal really well and the nib performance is there. So what are my pros and cons for the Vorther Profile fountain pen? I really do like the modern looks of this pen. 
it has a kind of nice industrial look to it. I also really like some, I'll say some of the haptics of this pen. It's a nice sensation to touch these aluminum parts that are sort of ribbed. They, they feel really nice in hand. This nib is a Schmidt medium nib. It's really smooth and it's been really reliable for me. This is a pretty cheap nib and it just goes to, to show you can have a really amazing cheap nib. So I, I, I do like that. The price of this pen is pretty affordably priced, around $50 street price. And for that, if you like the looks of this pen, I think that could be justified. Now in terms of cons, I do think that the way that this pen caps, I don't really like that. Sometimes, like right now, you kind of have to adjust the way that you put it on there because there'll be a ton, there'll be a ton of resistance and it won't go down. You kind of have to slightly move it around to cap it. I think that's pretty annoying. It does snap securely on the back. I do like that, so add that one to the pro pros column. Other cons, you only get medium and fine nib choices. They are Schmidt nibs, you know, not the prettiest looking thing, very standard stock. There's no name branding on it. So uh, one of the cheaper nibs that you can put on a pen. So I don't always like to see that, but that's pretty much it. Do you guys have this pen? Do you like this pen? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more fountain pen, paper, and ink videos, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much. And until next time.